ministry, things not working, people not working, things falling apart, sometimes things aren't working the way you like them to work. Training. How are you going to handle when folk walk out? How are you going to handle when people break promises? How are you going to handle when, when things just don't work? Their training, their training season was based on their inability to believe God. He was ready to bring them in right away. He was ready to bring them into the promise right away. But they weren't ready. They weren't ready. they weren't ready to handle the weight of glory. That's right. That's right. They weren't ready to handle the promises. When those brothers ran over into the promise and they came back with grapes on two shoulders, with the blessing of pomegranates, they, they saw everything. And when they came back with the testimony, the proof. Hey, it's a good land. God, what God said is true. It's a good land. They said, no, 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 we can't, we can't do it. No, we can't do it. We're grasshoppers. It's interesting, you know, because this is why you got to be careful who you hang out with. Because the Bible said, the Bible said of Joshua and Caleb that they had another spirit, not another degree, another spirit. So certain people have, certain folk have a particular spirit that can't see God moving. They can't, they look at problems and see themselves small. But there are some of us that see problems and see ourselves big because we serve a big God. That's why David could see. David say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And so, uh, uh, Goliath said, am I a dead dog that you would come out to me here with a sword and a spear? He said, you come to me with sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. But their inability, your inability, to believe your training process yes. Thank you, Jesus. and your inability to believe God and his potential yes. will extend your training. Yes. Sometimes we go through training too long because we haven't grown. You haven't matured. And you're not going to learn the lesson and receive the blessing until you learn the lesson. You're not going to walk into your promise until you learn the lesson. And don't you think that God is so cheap and God is so flanky flanky. You want a financial blessing, but you don't want to learn how to manage the stuff. So God now becomes an excuse. He becomes like a sugar daddy. Whenever we want something, God, and it just give it to him. But you haven't learned anything. He wants you to learn. Preaching You're preaching hard. You're preaching hard. Glory to God. Come on. You can translate it in any area of life you want to. Jesus. You want a beautiful wife. You want a great husband with big chest and big stuff. But you haven't learned yet how to be a godly woman. You want a fine sister. Look good. I turn her, all that kind of stuff, everything. But you don't want to grow up and be a good man. That's right. Come on, you're preaching hard. Sir. You're preaching. You're preaching hard. Oh, you're gonna grow to be a good woman. Grow to be a good man. Glory to God. Why ain't left the offer? Come on and talk to me. Just like your That's right. Amen. Come on. Here's God's process. However long it takes for you to believe God is how long your training is going to be. You hear me? However long it takes you to believe God. The Bible said that he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. So sometimes you're learning and the mastery of what you need to learn comes through the suffering. The challenges. Because sometimes our challenges are based on our inability to learn the lessons. Yes, sir. 
right? Our inability or our inability to listen and take instruction. That's right. Because sometimes God brings godly people in your life and they speak words into your life. They speak the right things in your life, but you do the wrong things. That's right. Come on. Right? Come you have on. people speak. You have your parents speak into your life and tell you to do the right thing, but you do the wrong thing and it delays your successes. That's right. Come on. That will bring you good friends. I mean, good friends that care about you. Amen. You, you know, people that will be there for you. They've got your back and they'll speak. Baby, don't do that. Sir, do this. You don't listen. It delays your successes. That's right. Amen. So however long, listen, this is, it, in some degree, it's a sort of consolation. However long it takes you to learn a lesson, God's going to take that long. That's right. And he'll work with you. That's right. He'll work with you. If it's going to take 5, 10, 15 years, he's going to work with you until you learn the lesson. Some of you are going to learn the lesson in your 50s. Right. All right. Now. Right. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> right. But but that's just that's just everybody's plight. Everybody's journey is different, right? Yeah. Some will learn it in their sixties. Some will learn it in their forties. Some learn it quick. quick. Some learn lessons quick and they they, they, they move forward. That's right. Right, and you can do exploits. You can do exploits for, with God from a young age if you learn the lesson. Somebody say amen. 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 So, so, so this is an important element for us that, that we begin to understand how God works, and He's doing some things in this training. Amen. He's doing some things in this training that are very, very important. The Bible said, "Listen, I brought you." If you hear in your book, He says, "I brought you." Verse 3, and he humbled thee. Yes, sir. And he suffered thee to be hungry. Yes. I'm sorry for some of us because, like the preacher was saying last night about this prosperity thing, right? Some of us, that's all we see. And we don't realize, listen, I don't have any problem with it. The Bible is full, full with declarations of prosperity. The issue is not prosperity. The issue is the process. It's the issue of how do we understand it. The issue is how do we walk into it. That's the issue. It's not the prosperity in itself. But God says to them, listen, I proved you. I tested you. I hungered. I humbled you. And I suffered you to be hungry. Yes, God. So sometimes... Jesus. God's the one that's doing the testing. Oh, yes. Listen, if you don't pass the money test, mm -hmm. the moral test, mm -hmm. right, you can't move on. No, you can't. You can't. The moral no. testing is important. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the, Bishop, listen, you're sitting, we're, we're, we're sitting here on, 26 late years later. Come I can on. guarantee you without Bishop ever telling me anything that he had to go through the moral test. He had to go through the money test. He has to go through the character test. Oh yeah. And every one of you, we're all going through it, Bishop. Right? Every one of you, if you're gonna move into the next level of your blessing, you're going to have to pass tests because God's the one that's gonna prove you. Can you handle this blessing? Can you handle this? Can you handle it? Yes, you're anointed. That's not the issue, not about you being anointed. You're anointed. He filled you with the Holy Ghost. Can you handle the blessing? There's no question that they're the covenant people of God. They are baptized unto Moses. They They've been through, they're covered by the fire. That's not the issue. I, this is for the church that are covenant-keeping people that God is going to test you and prove you to see what is inside of you. So when you stand up and say hallelujah, it's not empty. No, 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 no. There's something behind your praise, yes. amen. There's some weeping and tears behind there. You're not oh, yes. crying in the public, but when you go home or you're sitting at home, yes. you're, there's some tears coming down your face because you're struggling with what you're supposed to be. You're struggling why things aren't working, and God is testing you and trying you. He's locking the food away from you, and you're wondering, where is my help? Where is my provision? My eyes will look under the hill for what comes my help. He will make it so that you won't get the promotion. Sometimes he'll suffer you not to have a job for a long time so he can prove you can you still come to church and praise me with no job no milk in the fridge no bread in the pantry but can you praise me through that circumstance when your kids 
have turned upside down and gone crazy, when they've messed up, can you still come and praise me? Authentically praise me, not showing, not, not pretending, not to fake it till you make it. It's authentic. I don't know what to do with the child, but God, I bless you. I praise you. You gave me that child. So if you gave me that child, you can do something with that child. But until that time, I come to this church, I lift up my voice, I praise the Lord, I'll serve in the ministry, I'll help somebody else's child, I'll do something for somebody else, because you're making me. When you go through training, when you go through training, you will go through seasons. Seasons of training. Their season will come. What a year. 40 years. 40 years of this training season. David said this way, he said, uh, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or standeth in the ways of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the storm. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. There's a, there's a, there's a time. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's a time. There's a time. This guy thought you, this is, can I tell you something? There's a time of dryness. There's a time of dryness. There's a time when nothing's going on. There's a time where it's barren. There's a time when it's dry. There's a time you come to church, you don't feel nothing. You ain't feeling no spirit. You don't feel like praising God. It's a time, there's a season. Somebody say amen, please. But you gotta have something inside of you that even when you don't feel nothing, there's something in me. where Bishop didn't feel like doing pastoral work, but you just do it because you know what you know. God locked this in. God locked this up. God locked this up. Genesis 8. Quick, go. Genesis 8. Genesis 8, 22. Find it. You got it on the monitor and screen? Genesis 8. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. That's a, another song. Cold, heat, summer, winter, day, night shall not cease. That means I don't care how anointed you are today. You could be going through the summer season in your life, but I guarantee the night, winter, cold is coming. But what I learn in my summer should be able to take me through when the winter comes. So I want to learn the lesson now because I know winter is coming because God has set it in motion and it doesn't matter where I am, I'm going to learn how to praise him. Do you see where it says shall not cease? As long as the world is going on, I don't care how much anointing you have. There are going to be seasons of dryness, seasons of winter where it's cold. Can't get along with nobody. Trying to work things out. Seasons. But then there's there are daytime. There's a daytime in your life. You know, weeping may endure for a night, but, but, but my joy comes in the morning. The night lasts a certain amount of time. But I got to go through that weeping in the night. So don't try to wipe my tears when I'm going through my night season. You can't get rid of it. I've got to go through it. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. If you try 
let me wipe my tears in my night season, you may eliminate my testimony. Jesus. Hallelujah. You have to cry. Glory to God. Lady Father, you have to cry. Father, you have to cry. If you don't cry, you can't be what God wants you to be. That's right. That's right. Ah, glory, glory, glory. I know sometimes I think we misunderstand, but he said, endure hardness. I'm just telling you, hardness is coming because he's proving you and trying you because of what is before you. So you have to try to Endure. Somebody say amen. I'm there's a season. So for each of you, you're going through a particular season yes. in your life. Thank you, Jesus. One of the most beautiful things about you is can you identify with your what season? Yeah. Yeah. Can you identify? Because and then some of you, some of you are like crazy radical. Some of you are just so so faithful that you do crazy stuff. And even out of season you do stuff. Come on, I know some of you get it. But some, some of you just, just do crazy stuff out of season. Some of you have the spirit of Jesus. You know, there's fig over there, but it's not season. But you go and look and there should be fruit there. And you can speak the stuff out of season. Somebody's fixing to get a blessing. Because you're in a dryness in your life right now. The enemy has plugged up every well in your life. Where there's supposed to be water, there's no water. It's a dry season. And you're fixing to go do something and go down to Egypt. But God is saying, stay right where you are. And so right here in the midst of this famine. And if you get enough faith to sow out of season, you're going to reap a blessing. You're going to reap a blessing. Hallelujah. You need to know what season is, right? But some of you just have faith. This is a particular word right now, right here. This is a particular word for somebody that you might be out of season, but you're going to have to release some faith and sow in this season. That's what Jacob had to do. It was dry, part, famine. There was nothing there, but God said, so you better sow. Get ready. Somebody get ready to sow a praise in here. Get ready to sow a praise. Get ready to sow a praise. Things aren't working out for you, so a praise. Yes, it's a dry season, but so a praise. Yes, nothing's happening. You gotta step up on your feet over here and give God some praise. You gotta step on your feet. Ain't nothing working for you right now, but so a praise. It ain't working, but so a praise. Every now and then, God will defy some stuff. Every now and then, He'll say, Speak to the sun. Every now and then, He'll defy. It was God all the way. Hallelujah. Any of you right now that are going through lack in your life, you're a covenant child of God. If you haven't sinned, if you sinned, well, maybe the devil is here. But if you haven't sinned, 
if you haven't sinned and there's lack in your life, things aren't working. God is processing you through this particular time in your life. There will be seasons where there's lack in the house of God, but you've got to learn how to praise God. He's going to prove you and try you. Are you going to keep my commandments? Are you going to praise me when I don't do anything? Are you going to praise me? Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He kept them hungry because he wanted them to know that man does not live by bread alone. But there is a word. There is a word. Somebody say a word. There has to be a word in your season. There has to be a word in your dryness. Because man doesn't live by bread. But they live by every word that proceeds, that comes out of God. There has to be a word that comes out of God. Whenever there's word that comes out of God, I can live on that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's got to be somebody in here that knows how to access the living word. Somebody that knows how to draw something out of God. You might be going through something in your life. You've been going through an issue of bleeding in your life, but nothing's happening to you. You spend all your money, you've invested money anywhere trying to fix your circumstance. But somebody in here say, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just get to Jesus. I don't care what will happen to me. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care about anything right now. All I know is that if I can get to Jesus, something is going to change in my life. I've been going through some stuff. I've been crying and weeping all night for 12 long years. I've been going through some stuff. But if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Jesus feels hallelujah the woman touched his hem of his garment he said who touched me hallelujah something came out of him it's a proceeding word it's a proceeding word hallelujah so you need to know how to touch God and get something out of him when he said virtue there was something in him that came out of him. And she knew how to access the word. She knew how to touch. She said, listen, the Bible said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And she said, listen, I've expended all of my money. I've expended everything trying to get a cure. I realize that the answer is in the word. So if I touch the word, everything will be all right. So she touched the word, and immediately the blood dried up. She was made whole, and Jesus has to cry, who touched me? All these people around me. We got all these people around me. Who touched you? What do you mean? The church full. Who you what do you mean? Who touched you? Look at the choir stand. Who do you mean? Who touched you? But somebody is here that needed something from God. And they've been going through some training for a little while. They've been processed a little while. They've been going through some tears. They're singing, but they're going through some stuff. They're praying, but they're going through some stuff. They're going through some trials, but they're going through some stuff. But in the midst of the service, can I tell you that the church can be full, crowd all around Jesus, but somebody's going to touch the Lord. Somebody's going to touch Jesus. And when you touch him, you're going to get healing in your body. He said, I, I kept you hungry so that you would know that I'm your supply. That's right. God is your supply. Everybody say supply. supply. Then he said, listen, I'm almost finished. Close this up and somebody's going to come. He said, listen, these 40 years, watch this, these 40 years you've been wandering, the 40 years you were out of where you should have been. Because you should have been in the promise earlier. But because you didn't believe me, you're wondering. But while you're wondering, I'm going to make sure that you, I've made provision for you. That's right. I'm going to make sure that your clothes never, never wax old. Your shoes never wax old. That's why. Don't have, don't be intimidated. When you see folk come to church, 
with a different set of clothes all the time. And you have the one suit. You heard the preacher last night. You have the one shirt, the two shoes. All you have to do is make sure it's clean and come to church and bless the name of the Lord. Just don't kill yourself. Don't get yourself in debt. Don't rack up no credit card to be like nobody in church. You take your one suit, your one dress, your one hat, your one stocking, wash it, come to the house of God, give God some praise. Give him some glory. God is making a way for you. He's making provision for you. You don't have to try to be like nobody. Kill yourself. money to the Bank of America to try to keep up with nobody. One set of clothes they had. Hold on. One shoes. Forty years. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you something? That was a divine provision. That was divine provision. In that bleeding hot desert, in that the shoes was everything but tore those shoes up. That's right. The shoes were kept solid. That's right. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, God, I tell you some stuff about God. God is like, God is mind blowing. Mind -blowing. Yes. 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 Let me encourage someone that maybe is out of the will of God. How, lo how much God loves you, even though you're out of the will of God. You, you remember you remember Nebuchadnezzar? Mm -hmm. yes. God blessed this man yes. and gave him so much blessing, so much. everything. And Nebuchadnezzar with him. Right, sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Come on. Is this not great Babylon? That I, that I have built. God said, enough is enough. Yes. Yes. So God, wash him up. Lost his mind. Was in the field eating grass like a Somebody, God loves you even when you're in the world of God. What is for you is for you. Nobody can take what is for you. And if God has to turn you upside down, God has to run you up and down the place, the seat that is yours, nobody can sit on that seat. Nobody can take that position. Nobody can have that anointing. That anointing is yours. When God finishes with you, you get right back in your mind. You get yourself up. You clean up yourself. You change your clothes. You feel your skin. You brush your teeth and go right back.
divine provision, divine help. Divine. No con come on your foot. Divine. That's what he said. Your foot didn't swell. Divine. Your feet did not swell because you need your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He's going to keep you in peace whose minds are stayed on him. There is divine provision when you're going through your season. That's why when you go to the doctor and they do x-ray, they can't find nothing. You feel the pain, but they can't find nothing because God's hand is on you. X-ray can't pick up the hand of God. 